Hello everybody, my name is Jamie Davidson, I'm a Redgate developer, and today I'm going to be taking you through Redgate's solution to compliant database provisioning. DBAs, database developers, DevOps engineers, and others all over the world want to provide their teams with the flexibility and efficiency of developing and testing in realistic, isolated environments. Giving copies of your production environments to your teams carries its own set of risks. We may not have enough space on development or test environments to support multiple copies. Refreshing environments can take too long as it usually involves doing a backup and restore. And perhaps the most unsurprising, we're often unable to move data back into pre-production because of data sensitivity and regulatory requirements, whether it falls under HIPAA, the GDPR, Poppy, or others. SQL Provision from Redgate is an offering made up of SQL Clone, our database provisioning tool, and Data Masker, a tool used to mask sensitive data. Together, these support a database DevOps approach while keeping compliance central to the process. Databases can be created in seconds using just megabytes of storage, and sensitive data can be anonymized or replaced with realistic data to ensure data is protected as it moves between environments. With a single central management system for provisioning, the entire process is simple, repeatable, transparent, and auditable. Let's walk through the process of creating our desensitized environments. Here on my SQL Server, you'll see I have a forums-redgate-com development environment. If we drill down further into the data here, you'll recognize a few familiar faces, such as Steve Jones and Grant Fritchie. To protect this information, but retain its usefulness for development and testing purposes, we can define rules in the masking component of SQL provision. The output of this tool is a .dms mask set file that specifies exactly how to desensitize the data. In Data Masker, we have over 100 preset datasets that you can use to mask values from countries to names to credit card numbers. However, it is possible to define your own as well. Here we have a smaller generic set of rules to mask the subjects present in our contacts table. The first rule in our masking set is a substitution rule that takes values as they exist in the database and replaces them with meaningful data that can't be reverse engineered, including the use of a correlated data set to give realistic towns, counties, and postcodes here in the UK. The second rule is a row internal synchronization rule that will then take these masked values and create a realistic email address from the masked name field. Now that we have our masking rules, it is time to apply them in the cloning component of SQL provision. SQL clone works on two key concepts, images and clones. An image is a full-size, point-in-time representation of the database taken from either a live SQL server or from a backup. And this is placed on a Windows file share. The clones themselves are differencing disks that are created where they are needed to be consumed, on development or test servers, or even on developer machines. Because these clones hold only the differences, they are very fast to create or delete and take up very little space. I'm going to be creating an image from a backup of our forums-redgate-com production environment. Once we have entered the details of our backup, we are given the option to provide SQL scripts, which we could use to replace production users with dev or test users, for example, as well as DMS mask sets, which we can use to mask the sensitive data. Let's pick the one we just created. We can also choose which order to run these in, but crucially, all of these operations will be run against the image during its creation, meaning that before any of this data is cloned, all the sensitive data is masked. We finish by choosing where the image is to be stored and let SQL provision handle all the hard work for us. I'm going to name this forums image. Finally, we create multiple clones from this sanitized image and distribute them to our development servers. So let's go ahead and clone the image we just created.
As you can see, the clone is created in seconds, and regardless if this image was 100 gigabytes or even 10 terabytes in size, the clones will still only ever be several dozen megabytes on creation. If we go back into SSMS, we can see the forums dev Jamie clone that we just created. If we drill down into the contacts table, we see that the data has now been masked, but that it retains its demographic, its integrity, and its usefulness. If you would like to try SQL Provision, you can download your own free 14-day trial at red-gate.com forward slash SQL Provision. If you have any other questions, feel free to get in touch via phone or email. Thank you very much for watching.